Thank you so much. Uh, way to go, Atlas. We're huge fans, by the way. Uh, so hi, my name is Tori Smith, and uh, our company, Endiotics, makes little robot pills. I'm holding one right here. And the name of our company is The Adventure, to go inside the human body, to understand what is wrong, and let's put robot arms and fix the damn thing at some point, right? So let's go to the next slide here. There we go. So I'd like to start this adventure with an MVP, minimum viable product that can actually help people in the short term, and that's PillBot. PillBot is a swimming robot pill, kind of like the magnetic pills, but in this case it moves under its own power. It's basically just a way to have a quick, easy look around if a patient is willing to drink some water and skip their breakfast. But after that comes pill surgeon. You know, let's do some tissue sampling, let's start to collect microbiome samples, let's do things with this moving robotic platform. And then eventually, let's make it smaller. Let's go into the brain, let's do brain surgery, right? There's no limit to where we can go if we're willing to take the first step. And we see a gap, we see this big gap in the diagnostic space. Uh, endoscopes uh, of many kinds would be the gold standard. They get the job done. Pill cameras, I think we, we, we thought pill cameras were going to fundamentally change people's lives many, many years ago. Uh, but unfortunately, they fell into a niche use case. And uh, Medtronic uh, with AI has done a huge amount in getting more out of, out of the pill camera platform. But we think if we can make them move and become a platform for a new type of medicine, there's an opportunity. And we need to give some credit to the magnetic technology out there, in this case, magnetic pills, uh, because it's amazing. But our question is, what if you could actually decouple a patient from the hospital visit to take an active look around? And no matter where you look in the spectrum, from the device market to the number of patients getting endoscopy procedures of various types, we think there is a huge opportunity for this minimum viable product for PillBot and, and, and perhaps an even bigger opportunity for the market category that we intend to create. We, we like to call it micro-robotics in the human body. And if you're a doctor, my goal is to make screenings and, and basic EGDs much simpler, right? If you want to look around in someone's belly, maybe, maybe we could do that on their first visit instead of after they go through a couple of appropriate steps before we would knock you out of jam tube into you. Uh, if you're a patient, that should make you pretty happy, right? And if we do find something really scary, well, let's get you to the hospital much earlier, right? I think one thing I'm hoping is that at some point, a doctor will call us up and say, hey, we were doing a screening, someone had a bellyache, but it turned out to be a cancer. We wouldn't have found that uh, for years or months. Right? My hope is that at some point soon we can actually start saving lives by making it really easy to look around. So how do we do it? We do it with robot pills. Uh, PillBot is basically a little moving eyeball in the stomach. Uh, I've swallowed 15 of these things. It's really fun to control with Xbox. Uh, my hope is probably that we just turn it into a phone app. We don't really see a need for this to be a big clunky thing for a clinic to adopt. I'd like to think that a patient could swallow a pill bot anywhere on Earth, and a doctor anywhere else on Earth could control it. That would be pretty cool, right? So if we zoom a little bit in on how this works, I have a bunch of videos on YouTube, you can see our R&D progress all the time. It's a little swimming pill camera. Uh, so we have three electric motors right now. We can squirt water in six different directions. We put a lot of work into making it float relatively neutrally in, in a belly full of water and then just try to give a live video feed to the doctors. We're constantly working on the quality of the video and battery life, but I will say that we're very, very excited about PillBot right now. And uh, we're actually based right here in the Bay Area. We have almost 9,000 square feet in Hayward, and uh, we have mills and lathes, 3D printers. We are building these robots around the clock. Uh, we're totally vertically integrated. We do all of our own design work. Uh, we've raised a few million dollars, and very, very proud to have support from some of the coolest GIs out there. Uh, that's uh, my chairman and Viv doing our first cadaver study. And then those other pictures are inside my own stuff. Uh, we, we take our IP very seriously. Perkins Coie helps us with our corporate IP law. The, our, our lawyers have actually invested in us a few times personally. 
Uh, the goal is simply to do this right. Um, I'd like to say that we're on the path to being an acquirable company. I'd also like to say that part of me wants to IPO this thing and, and be with that long enough to see the pill surgeon or the microsurgeon come to light. But either way, we have to be solid with our IP. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer with 17 years designing new devices, but we have people on this team from Harvard, from Stanford, Johns Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, and we're basically a group of hardcore electrical, mechanical, computer engineers trying very hard to work with people from industry, from, from doctors, even to regulatory to actually make this a reality. Very glad to have a partnership with Mayo Clinic uh, that kind of allows us to, to work very intimately with them and you know, basically get this thing ready for clinical trials to take it to market. Uh, this board here doesn't really need much of an introduction, but I will say that it is a big honor to be doing our best to build these pills because people who matter are starting to ask for them. And so we're trying hard to make this real. And uh, let's finish this out. We can build this thing for about 50 bucks today, maybe 25 bucks in the future. It's actually pretty inexpensive. And if we look at pill camera codes or CPT codes for, for magnetic pills, it's a pretty good proposition. And for the last slide, I'll just say that we're always fundraising. You know, our, the money we're raising right now should take us to first clinical trials. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. Um, can you speak to the length of time and the cost to complete, uh, to get to your regulatory, go through the regulatory pathway and complete clinical trials? Honestly, I think we probably need to raise another 20 million bucks. We've got about 4.5 into the company so far. Okay. And in terms of the time frame? Well, we just got a 1.5 million commitment that gives us runway. Uh, I would like to be on a stage this fall swallowing the thing with my black turtleneck on and use that platform to raise Series A. Um, so hopefully we can start those talks in the fall, maybe spring for being realistic. Hey, Tori, nice, nice presentation. Uh, I know you, I um, can imagine, you have made difficult uh, challenges to overcome technically, but the one that is keeping you up at night, which one is it? Honestly, uh, until a month ago, it was our video quality. If you check our videos on YouTube, it's terrible video quality. But in the last few months, embedded firmware engineers have been calling us up. People that we had worked with on a part-time basis joined the team. They told me I would be hiring them. And we think we're actually going to be delivering solid video soon. So at this point, I'm just trying not to mess that up. I want to keep this momentum building with the team. Impressive presentation. All wanted to be able to steer kick somewhere along the line. Um, what are your thoughts for his use in the cold? Well, I'll tell you what, I've swallowed 15 of these, and uh, yeah, one guy. I've, the most I've ever swallowed once was two at Burning Man 2020. <laughs> the uh, maxed out Xbox controllers, and we called it Colon Racing 5000. Uh, but uh, to, your, to your question, I've also popped three of these up the ace with uh, my chairman duct taping the to the belly. And uh, I, I think we need an aqueous environment to swim in. If we look at the colonic machines out there, we might have an opportunity to create a no prep walk in colonoscopy. Uh, but thank goodness for the stomach, right? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tori. The, uh, the three platforms that you show the, the pill bot followed by the surgical followed by the micro can you help us from a timeline perspective how long did each tell you what i would love to do basic tissue sampling in my own stomach sometime this fall but i would need help from people in this room to do that legally and ethically and anyone else um, i think that we could probably do basic tissue sampling you know maybe 18 months after our initial uh, mvp goes to market but for the microsurgeon, I mean, that thing needs to be nuclear powered, I think. Uh, so my goal is to show the world that you can, in fact, operate a tiny robot in the body, even in a limited form, and then hopefully we take that and run with it. Tori, just a quick question. Really appreciate the team you put together. Who among that team is principally responsible for your clinical trial strategy? 
So that's where we have to lean really heavily on Viv and uh, also Nader, who's in the room. Um, we, we, we're basically just trying not to make them look bad publicly. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.